perhaps uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, just before Council responds to my application for efficiency and expediency, permit me also to bring to the attention um, one more uh, application in respect to the documents that were served upon the Deputy President. Mr. Speaker, sir, by a letter that you referred to, sent from the Speaker of the National Assembly to the Speaker of the Senate, the Speaker of the National Assembly did submit the documents that emanated from the National Assembly. Counsel for the Deputy President, take your seat first. You'll have, uh, you'll have your moment. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, if I could take a few moments this afternoon to respond to the preliminary objection that has been raised. I have three quick issues in response to that objection. Number one, the Constitution of Kenya at Article 77 is the primary law that then speaks to restrictions on activities of state officers. In particular, Article 77.1 reads, a full-time state officer shall not participate in any other gainful employment. Mr. Speaker, sir, that article introduces one critical variable, gainful employment. Mr. Speaker, sir, gainful employment has been defined within our laws. Specifically, Section 26 of the Leadership and Integrity Act has defined what would amount to gainful employment. If I may, Mr. Speaker, sir, Section 26.1 reads, subject to section, subsection 2, a state officer who is serving on a full-time basis shall not participate in any other gainful employment. It then proceeds at subsection 2 to say, in this section, gainful employment means work that a person can pursue and perform for money or other form of compensation or remuneration which is inherently incompatible with the responsibilities of the state office or which results in the impairment of a judgment of a state officer in the execution of the functions of a state office or results in a conflict of interest in terms of section 16. And so to, the, to our response, there has been no assertion that learned senior counsel James Orengo by representing the part, a party before this house has participated in gainful employment. In any case, what evidence has been tendered before this honorable house to speak to that fact? Mr. Speaker, sir, that is a question that has also received judicial interpretation. If I may, in the election petition number three of 2013 filed in the High Court in Busia, similar applications, I mean, a similar application was made, again objecting to the participation of the Honorable James Orengo Senior Counsel in the proceedings in that matter. The judge handling that case interpreted both Article 77 as read with Section 26 of the Leadership and Integrity Act and had this to say at paragraph 23, 28, sorry, that it had been argued that by representing a party in an election petition, the honorable senator would be compromising the political neutrality of his office. I would not agree. Section 23 of this act is a provision on political neutrality expected of appointed state officers. Honorable Orengo holds an elective position. Elected members of Senate are politicians. The provisions of Section 23 do not apply uh, 
to them. So even if it was to be assumed that, the, uh, that by representing the third respondent, Honorable Orengo is pursuing a political agenda, that would not be inimical to his office as a member of the Senate. And so, Mr. Speaker, I submit that unless there is material that will be tabled before this House, that by appearing for a party before this House, then the Honorable uh, Mr. James Orengo, Senior Counsel, would have engaged in, uh, in, in uh, gainful employment, that objection does not stand any merit. Number two, the second test that has been applied by courts is the test around conflict of interest. Again, Mr. Speaker, the, our courts have had occasion to interpret what amounts to conflict of interest. In a case determined by a five-judge bench, a case uh, reported in our laws, that is EKLR 2018, the case of Philomena Mbetemwilu versus the DPP and two, uh, two others, the bench, in determining and dismissing a similar application, defined conflict of interest as a situation where one is confronted by two different interests so that serving one interest would be against the other. Mr. Speaker, sir, there hasn't been any conflict of interest that has been, even in the least, mentioned by uh, the, uh, the objector to the participation of uh, senior counsel, the Honorable uh, James Orengo. Finally, has there been an indication as to any prejudice that could be occasioned by the participation of uh, the Honorable James Orengo Senior Counsel before this house this afternoon? To the best of my recollection, none has been mentioned. Is counsel, for instance, saying that the participation of the Honorable James Orengo before the proceedings in this house would be such that they would fundamentally impair their defense when they get the opportunity to present the case? I'm just asking myself, that has not been said. In any case, Mr. Speaker, sir, if that was to be the case and the fear that has been presented, then as advocates, as counsel, we operate within very clear and defined rules. Those rules are meant to ensure that a party before this house, just like would be a party before any court or any other forum, does not suffer or does not have a compromise to their uh, uh, rights to fair hearing under Article 50. In the absence of any prejudice that has been mentioned before you, we urge that that objection be dismissed. I've also had occasion to look at the case that was uh, referred to by my learned friend, Mr. Njiru, and with respect, that case turned on two critical points. The first one being that the participation of the Honorable James Orengo as a senator in that matter was said to have had the potential of compromising his participation friends or departure. between what uh, led to the finding in that decision and what we have before you. The judges, I mean the judge in that specific matter also went on to add that there must also be established a question or a fact of uh, uh, benefit. Again, I reiterate that no indication, no evidence or even assertion has been presented before this house to suggest that the Honorable uh, James Orengo Senior Counsel has in any way benefited by being in this house participating as counsel. So with that, Mr. Speaker, sir, we urge that that objection be dismissed. I am most obliged. Thank you, counsel, for His Excellency, the Deputy President. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. And in brief response to the submissions by my learned friend, there is no denial that has come from the from counsel's defense that senior counsel Honorable James Orengo is here on pro bono basis. That evidence has not been brought. That claim has not been denied. He is therefore here as counsel earning a fee, and that is what Section 26. Senior counsel, don't go to that line of argument. If the 
evidence of him acting pro bono has not been laid on the table? Has the evidence of him earning been put on the table? Mr. Speaker, sir, the only presumption... No, we are not going to presume facts. We are not. Mr. Speaker, sir, I am well guided, but may be noted and may go on record that the grounds laid by Section 26, Subsection 2, have not been rebutted by the submissions made by Council insofar as the gainful employment in these proceedings is concerned. Number two, he is here as a governor of Siaya County, not as a senator. And as such, this, the petition number three of 2013 is distinguishable from the fact that he's here as a serving governor. And that is what section 26, subsection two, speaks to. And that is also equally the, the provisions of article 77 of the constitution. Further to that, Mr. Speaker, sir, the test of prejudice is a creation by council. It is not the one that at section 26, subsection 2, and uh, article 77 speaks to. The only test is gainful employment. Unless that one is rebutted, uh, rebutted the general presumption again, your lordship and uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, and that is a legal presumption unless it is rebutted, is that he is here for a main purpose to earn a living. Mr. Speaker, sir, I leave that to the House to make a determination. Permit me once more to move the House with my last and final application. Yeah, in so far as Mr. Speaker, sir, these proceedings are in issue. Mr. Speaker, sir, on the 8th of October 2024, this House was served with a resolution from the National Assembly by the Speaker of the National Assembly, via the letter, the letter that the Speaker of the Senate referred to. That letter, Mr. Speaker, sir, appears at page 547 to 548 of volume five of the National Assembly's bundle of document. There is no, Mr. Speaker, sir, we were then served with two sets of documents, an affidavit dated the 11th of October Deponed by one Peterson Jomo Mushira. Our objection, Mr. Speaker, sir, is that that document, that affidavit, did not form part of the documents that were submitted by the Speaker of the National Assembly to the Speaker of the Senate. It's our argument, Mr. Speaker, sir, that this is new evidence. Further to that, Mr. Speaker, sir, we were equally served with a bundle of document from the National Assembly, which is labeled as Volume 8A, which is also indicated as responses from various government agencies. Again, Mr. Speaker, sir, this is new evidence that does not find itself at page 547 to 548 of the bundle of documents submitted to you or to this Honorable House by the Speaker. The prejudice, Mr. Speaker, sir, is that our response was exclusively limited to the documents that we were served with. Further to that, your, your, Mr. Speaker, sir, it's our argument and our application that these documents will prejudice our case in the sense that, Mr. Speaker, sir, they will violate our rights to a fair hearing. This is trial by ambush by the National Assembly. It's a tradition of this House, Mr. Speaker, sir, and I refer to the findings of this House in the 
Honorable Governor Sonko, in a ruling delivered by the Speaker of this House on the 17th of December, which ruling barred the County Assembly of Nairobi from introducing any new evidence. It has been the tradition of this House to protect all the parties that appears before it, so that, your, uh, your Mr. Speaker, sir, justice will not only be done, but will also seem to be done. We move this House to have this document expunged from record, and the, county, the, the National Assembly be barred from relying on these documents. Mr. Speaker, sir, if these documents will be admitted, we shall suffer prejudice in the sense that we shall have no ability or we shall have been denied an opportunity to respond to the same. We urge you, Mr. Speaker, sir, to hold that these documents is new evidence and we rely on Rule 19 of the, this House rules. Noting that, Mr. Speaker, sir, the rules guiding these, provision, uh, these proceedings today do not provide for how to deal with new evidence as and when the same is brought to the attention of the House. However, the rules guiding the proceedings in the impeachment of a governor or deputy governor provides that new evidence shall not be admitted. Further to that, Mr. Speaker, sir, permit me to bring to your attention the findings in the case uh, in the civil appeal number 21 of 2014, which was the case of Governor Wambora versus the County of uh, Assembly of Embu. Mr. Speaker, sir, in that case, Justice uh, um, Diek, may the Lord rest his soul in peace, uh, Chief Justice Mother Komi, as then, she, as, as then was, and Justice Vishram, held that these proceedings of the impeachment of a president or deputy president are paramateria to the impeachment of a governor. That is to say, they are identical. So what applies in those rules in the impeachment of the governor can equally and should equally apply to these rules. And finally, this house being a house of record, then we are bowed by our previous presidents. I am most obliged. Now, counsel for the National Assembly, you have uh, one and a half minutes to respond. You may respond now or you may respond after the lunch break. Right. Mr. Speaker, sir, I could res respond shortly because after the lunch break. Under our rules, we have to rise at 1.15. Permit me then to respond after the lunch break. Most obliged. So, honorable members, I will deliver ruling at 2.30 and then allow the Council for the National Assembly to proceed to respond to the second limb of the objection.